Customising workspaces and creating document profiles is a great way to level up your workflow. My name is Richard Carpenter, a web designer and illustrator, and in today's video I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so if you're an avid user of Adobe Illustrator, you might be a bit overwhelmed and confused on all the tools and panels which are normally open by default. The first thing I tend to do with any Adobe related application is create a custom workspace. This enables me to quickly find and use the tools I use most. There are some preset workspaces you can switch between, and the way you access these are via the menu by going to Window and Workspace, or by using the drop down menu in the top right corner. As you can see there are a number of different ones you can choose between from painting to typography. But we don't want to use any of these, we want to create our own. So to do this, simply select one of the presets to use as a base. I find the Essentials Classic Workspace works best. So once you've selected the preset, we can begin to open and close the panels we do and do not need. The panels I want to keep, I'm just going to drag these off to one side and we can reorganize them at the end. So I want to keep the brushes panel, layers and swatches. Pathfinder, don't want the align tool, so you can just close that off. Transform tool, don't want that. Transparency, stroke, gradient, character, open type I don't need, and paragraph. And what we can do is we can group some of these together. So anything to do with the text, we can just dock these on top of one another and we get the little tabs. And something else that we can do as well is some of the tools actually have additional options. So if we click the little three lines and go to show options, gives us a few more options to play with and you can do this for each panel if it's available. So once you've grouped some of the panels together, we can start moving them back over to the right sidebar and start docking them into place ready to use. So to dock it into place, just drag the first panel across until you see the blue line and then that will dock it into place. And then it's just a matter of docking each window to how you want to work. So I'll generally have all the colors in one place and then things like layers, anything to do with typography on the right hand side. So once you've docked all the panels into place, we can now start enabling some of the other panels which aren't currently open. To do this we just go to window and then select any one of these to open the panel. But from this list there's only two more which I would want to open and that is symbols and colour guide. So I'll grab the colour guide and move it under the swatches and the symbols will bundle in with the layers and brushes. Once you're happy with all the panels that we've chosen and their positions that they're in, we can simply just go to window, workspace, new workspace and then just give this workspace a name. So I'm just going to call it test. Workspace. Now every time you load up Adobe Illustrator it will use this workspace. If you find that the workspace isn't selected you can simply click the drop down in the top right corner and just select your workspace from within the list. So with our workspace now complete the next thing we want to do is create our very own custom document profile. So the benefits of creating your own document profile is every time you use Adobe Illustrator you'll have your own set of swatches so you're not going to be limited to the swatches that Illustrator provides. You can actually have your own um, folder sets and every time you create a new document based on this document profile they'll always be available to you and that goes the same for any symbols and any brushes. So to create a new document profile the first thing you want to do is close your current document and then navigate to the new document profiles folder within your users folder so the path for windows will be users your username app data roaming adobe adobe illustrator 23 settings and depending on what version you have the number 23 it might be 22 or 21 depending on how old or new your version of illustrator is engb Time 64 and then new document profiles. I'll put the Mac equivalent folder path in the description below. So once you've navigated to the folder, as you can see, there's already some document profiles within there. So these are the default current Illustrator document profiles. And what we want to do, we just want to open one of these depending on which one you tend to work with the most. So if you do a lot of logo designs, um, business cards, that type of thing, you typically want to open the print one. If you do a lot of web graphics like myself, just things for the internet, then you probably want to use the web one. 
So once you've made that decision, just open whichever one is applicable to yourself. So once the document's open, what we want to do is first select all our swatches. So if you select the little three lines and open the menu, you can go to select all unused and then just hit the delete swatch icon at the bottom. And this will remove all the swatches and you can remove the black and white as well. So basically you've got no swatches in there at all. You can do the same for your brushes and you can do the same for the symbols. So we essentially now have a blank canvas and we can start tailoring these tools to suit us. So we can choose the swatches that we use the most, the symbols that we can constantly reuse and obviously the brushes that we are constantly reusing. So the first thing we can do is just set up a couple of swatches. So using the rectangle tool, just create a square and then just fill the square with one of the colors that you constantly use or it might be that you already have a set of colors which you can just copy and paste into Illustrator. And I'm just going to duplicate this three times and choose a different color for each one. So once you have your colors, make a selection around all of them and then just press the new color group icon at the bottom of the swatches panel and then we can name this color group if we want to so we'll just call this and we can make sure that the convert process to global is ticked and that will ensure that all these colors are global colors so if you press ok remove the squares and you can see we've got these color swatches within our swatches panel we can also do the same with our brushes and symbols. So with the symbols, you might have your logo as a vector or a particular set of icons that you're constantly using like social media icons. So if you just copy and paste them to the artboard and then simply drag the shape into the symbols panel, give the symbol a name, change the export type to a graphic and we want to keep this as a static symbol and then just press OK. Remove the icon from the artboard and then as you can see we can reuse this symbol in any of our future projects. So once you've added all the symbols, you've set up your brushes, you've set up all your swatches, the next thing we want to do is go to File, Save As and within that new document profiles folder you want to rename the file to, I'll just put test and then press save. You can leave all these options as default and just press OK. And if we close our current document, go to create new. So within the presets at the top, depending on which one you started with. So if you started with the print one, your document profile will sit within the print one. We use the web one, so if I click to web and scroll to the bottom, you can see there's our test profile. And if we create a new document based on that test profile, there you go. We've got our symbols available to us and we've also got our coloured swatches available to us. And I'll just show you another example. So if I just close this current document and go to create new again and click web to the bottom and select my rich GFX profile and press create. You see I've got all my swatches set up for me, I've got my logo set up, all my social media icons and obviously any swatches that I, that I use. And because this isn't actually my workspace, I can actually go back and select my workspace. And there you go. This is the typical workspace you'll see me working within within the rest of my videos. That's it for this one folks. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one.